Hey, Brooke Scholars, welcome back to Remote Learning with me, Mr. Scott. How are you? How was your vacation? Happy Monday. Nice to see you back here. Um, I'm particularly excited about the readings that we're going to do today and then again tomorrow. Uh, they are different readings, but they both have one thing in common. Not only are they fiction, but they're actually historical fiction. Do you remember what historical fiction is? Tell me. That's right. A story that didn't actually happen. It's made up. It has characters and it has lots of different things. It's it's fiction. It's a story. Um, someone just kind of invented it and created it and made it up, right? But historical means that it takes place in a certain time period. Now, when you're reading historical fiction, it's very, very important as a reader that you really think about what life is like for the characters, okay? You've got to think about where they live, you've got to think about when they live, and uh, it can be kind of exciting to put yourself into those uh, stories and think about what the characters are like and what they have to deal with every day, because it's going to be different than the way that you and I experience our day-to-day -day life. So, historical fiction. One, let's really, really make sure that we are focused on the setting, where this story takes place, when it takes place. What does that mean for the characters that we're going to meet? And so without further ado, let's jump in. Here we go. Panning for gold. Ooh, gold. <laughs> Precious metals. All right. Panning for gold. It's an interesting title. Panning. Well, let's see what it says. In 1828, gold had just been discovered in South Carolina. Many young and old uh, people, sorry, people young and old dreamed of becoming wealthy by finding precious nuggets of gold in the state's rivers and streams. Hmm. All right, let's keep going. Sarah bounced excitedly down the narrow trail after her brother, Ben. Her eyes gleamed as the morning sun shone down upon them. Ben whistled ahead of her, carrying his cloth sack of equipment over his shoulder. Keep up, Ben hollered back. We don't have much time. He hoped his sister would not interfere with his work. He wasn't thrilled about bringing his youngest sister along, and they had to be home soon to do chores. Sarah admired her brother. Ben had experience panning for gold. He had helped his father and some other adults look for gold in a spot up the river. But this was the first time Sarah had been allowed to go. Even though Sarah was excited, part of her feared that she would that she may not be cut out for panning. Holding up her long skirt, Sarah eagerly caught up with Ben. Thoughts of glittering, gleaming gold filled her head. Soon they reached the place where Ben had chosen to start panning. He put down his sack and spread the supplies on the ground. Ben handed Sarah a round pan and a shovel. She gave him a questioning look. With only a hint of impatience, Ben took a deep breath and demonstrated for her. First, you look for big rocks in the stream. Maybe there will be a place where the water slows down and flows lightly over the rock. That is where small pieces of gold can sometimes be found, he explained. Sarah found her spot and waited for him to continue. Ben rolled his pants up and took the pan from Sarah. Use the shovel to scrape some sand and dirt from the stream into the pan like this, he said. He then handed the pan to Sarah. Swirl it with your hand until the sand settles on the bottom and the water is on top, he instructed, enjoying the role of expert. Sarah listened carefully as he told her to gently pour the water out of the top of the pan, leaving the sand on the bottom. Then she gently rubbed a small layer of sand off the top of what was left in the pan. Make sure you take off each layer slowly. Inspect the sand for small pieces of shimmering rock, he said. If Sarah were lucky, a piece of rock would be waiting in one of the layers. Ben handed her a container to put the pieces in. If we find something that looks important, we'll take it home to ask if it is real or if it's just fool's gold, he suggested. Sarah watched her brother and paid close attention to how it worked. She scooped and scraped, then scooped and scraped some more. At first, she could not find a single shimmering object. 
Eventually, after gaining more confidence, she decided to move to another spot where the water trickled over a larger rock. After a while, Sarah noticed her brother staring silently at the water. She could tell that he was frustrated that he was not finding anything. But Sarah did not get upset. Instead, she continued to search the sandy stream thoroughly. Sarah was determined to give her brother a reason to be proud of her, not make him annoyed that she came along. Suddenly, her heart skipped a beat. Ben, she cried, they sparkle. Covered in mud from head to toe, Sarah held some small shiny rocks in her hand. Ben jumped up and ran to observe her findings. Encouraged, he grabbed his pan and started working alongside her. I'm glad you were so determined, he said, trying not to laugh at how dirty she was. You're not so bad to have around, you know. Sarah returned his smile. Thanks, she replied as she continued to pan and her head, filled with visions of what she would do if her rocks were real gold. What a fascinating possibility. Well, there you have it, my friends. A very interesting story. Again, this was uh, this was fiction, but more importantly, it was historical fiction. So let's take some time as really careful readers and think about the setting. Where and when did this take place? Well, it did mention in the beginning right there at the top, it said 1828. Now, that is over uh, a, a very, very long time ago hundreds of years ago. And uh, what was the life like for people back then? Well, I don't think there were cars. I don't think there were microwaves or phones or TVs or anything like that. People lived what they called a very simple life. Uh, you would live maybe in a, in a cabin or some sort of home uh, constructed maybe mainly of wood or some stone. And um, uh, farming was a very, very important piece part of people's lives back then, because uh, that was, of course, how you uh, how you made your money and how you got your food to eat. Um, so 1828, and it sounds like one of the most important things, particularly for these two young people, is uh, that they want to uh, they want to find gold. Uh, that's what they're doing. And when it says panning, it means that they are going to a stream, of course, they're lifting up um, soil uh, and water and looking through and trying to find little pieces of gold. So that's what this story was all about. So, okay, let's think about who we have here. Sarah, younger sister, uh, and then Ben is the older brother. And they leave their home, uh, and they go off to a stream. Um, and uh, that's what they're doing. They're panning for gold. They're trying to find little pieces of gold that then, of course, they can sell. And, you know, she can uh, they can both buy whatever they want. And, uh, and at first, Ben wasn't really thinking much of having his youngest sister, Sarah, tag along. Uh, he was kind of frustrated, you know, he's walking ahead of her, she's trying to keep up behind him, maybe slowing him down. He then needs to explain the process of what you actually have to do when you're panning for gold, what you do with all of the tools that he carries in kind of like a, kind of a bindle and stick sort of situation there. Um, so, uh, so he's explaining to Sarah and, uh, and letting her know what to do, uh, and then she's really excited because she, she really wants to find uh, some gold. Uh, and really wants to make her brother feel, you know, proud of her. So uh, this continues for a little while, and eventually Ben gets particularly frustrated. It, it explained that he was staring at the water, and he was really unhappy with the fact that he couldn't find any gold. Um, but Sarah stays determined, and uh, she moves to a different area of the stream, continues scraping and scooping and sifting and looking, and uh, eventually she finds um, some shimmery rocks, and she's really excited, and she calls Ben over. And Ben comes over and he's excited, but he also thinks that it's a little funny because at this point, Sarah is covered from head to toe in mud, having been in the river and, you know, digging and searching and, and trying to find gold. Uh, and it doesn't say at the end there whether it's whether it's going to be real gold and they're going to you know earn some money by selling it or if it's what they call fool's gold, um, which I think is um, it's stone, uh, a type of stone that looks very much like gold, but actually isn't. It doesn't have the same value to it. So um, that's kind of where they leave it. You know, I love that last line. Imagine the possibilities, uh, exciting possibilities. So yeah, it could be something um, that is that has a lot of money and they can take it and they can sell it. And uh, that's that. It's a good thing we were stopping and thinking about that story, my friends, because now we are both, you and I, prepared for the questions at the bottom of the page. 
So your job, as always, get yourself a pencil and paper. I'm going to ask you to write your name, the date, the title, panning for gold right there in the middle. Remember how we did that? Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Uh, then on the left-hand side, we're going to write down all of the multiple choice answers. Uh, and then there are two short answer questions. Don't forget, do the short answers, kids. Um, myself and all the other second grade teachers want to uh, read your work. All right, so you know your task. Um, best bet is probably to read through one more time and then answer those questions. Take a picture, upload it on Seesaw, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow for some more historical fiction fun. All right, friends. So go and have a good day. Answer those questions. Can't wait to see your work. I'll see you tomorrow for Mr. Scott. Bye.